Swimmers, triathletes, and their coaches love a good acronym when it comes to remembering something that has well-meaning intentions to help you improve your swimming. Let's take SWOLF for example. This is actually half acronym and half portmanteau. There's a funny word. A fusion of two words that is swimming and golf. It's been used for eons by both coaches and now smart devices to purportedly give you a measure of your efficiency in the water by combining the number of strokes you do per length and the time it takes you to complete each length, i.e. 56 strokes and 56 seconds would give you a score of 112. To get a better or lower score, one should either take fewer strokes and or complete the length in a shorter time. Like improved prowess in golf, Swolf purports that to be more efficient when swimming, you have to try to reduce your total number. However, this is very much not the case. And just like the acronym BLABT, that's B-L-A-B-T, We'll demonstrate today how both of these age-old swimming acronyms might actually be holding you back with your swimming. Today's video sees us commence a five-part series over the next five weeks to help you build up the fundamentals of your swimming from absolute basics, whoever you are. As we'll demonstrate, even some of the very top-level performers in our sport can benefit from reviewing these fundamentals. Please remember to like and subscribe using the links below because it really helps us with this channel. So what's wrong with SWOLF? I've always had a problem with SWOLF and surprisingly enough, when talking to some of the various manufacturers who feature this metric on their own devices, I'm not alone. It's often included because it just is and because it's been around for such a long time. But with my work with tens of thousands of swimmers over the last 20 years, I've noticed just how much swimmers who've been told they need to reduce their stroke count or increase their distance per stroke, DPS, there's another acronym for you, whilst trying to maintain their speed, tend to go to their legs or GTTL. Uh, just kidding, I obviously just made that up. In order to get their scores down, this has a profound effect on their economy by causing a spike in their heart rate, given that the larger muscle groups of the quads and the hamstrings really require a lot of energy to power. This is precisely what was happening with Chelsea Sodaro when I started working with her in May 2022, prior to dramatically turning her swimming economy around and then winning the Hawaii Ironman World Championships a few months later. Let's hear now how much Chelsea attributed that game-changing transformation to her swimming on her Kona win. And guess what? Her swath number actually went up, not down. You know, I had been in Mallorca before Hamburg. Mm -hmm. um, Dan's really good friend, Paul Newsom, happened to be there. Mm -hmm. And Paul took the time to like do a session in the pool with me. And we realized that I had been kicking way too much during the swim. Mm. And so when I would start the bike leg in my previous races that season, I was totally gassed, like I had no power. And, and so we sorted that out a bit. And when I got to Hamburg, I finally felt good when I got on the bike. Yeah. I was seeing these splits and just, you know, you know when you're seeing positive feedback on your bike computer and um, on the course, it just makes you like more and more motivated. In this pool a couple of years ago, I was working with Lucy Charles. She can kick like this, but she kicks like this when she's when she's racing. Yeah. Um, she's got a stroke which could look a lot longer and smoother like yours does over here, but she doesn't swim like that. She swims like this because it's the optimal way for her to swim. But with that instruction to slow the stroke rate down a little bit, you've by and large lengthened out the stroke and brought some of this leg kick in. And I think that might tally up with why you're feeling maybe in the first five or six Ks on the bike. Yeah. While we're maybe just sort of like a bit cooked at that point. It really is incredible. And you, you did mention Paul Newsome. Big shout out to Paul. He um. He does get swimming, especially when it's specific to triathlon and open water. Looking through your performances and your results before this show, it was incredible to see your swim times suddenly accelerate from Mallorca onwards. This change to Chelsea's stroke, where we ignored an increasing swolf as a very poor measure of efficiency, is also echoed by the world's best pool and open water swimmers. Katie Ledecky, Adam Peaty, and Gregario Paltrinieri have some of the highest swolf scores because of the way that they power their technique with a shorter stroke, much more rhythmical and fluid with a higher stroke rate, and thus the ability to tone their kick down, and of course, 
then also their heart rate. Ironically enough, most smart devices now contain all the input metrics they'd ever need to measure in order to create a much more valid output metric for efficiency, but no one's doing it yet. Watch this space as we're onto it here at Swim Smooth. We're calling it your hero score, or are we? So what's the beef with blabbed? It's hard to say, of course, more than anything. The acronym BLABBED has been used as a sort of hierarchy of needs for your stroke, but unlike the popular 1943 work, A Theory of Human Motivation by Abraham Maslow, it just makes no sense at all. B is for body, L is for legs, A is for arms, B is for breathing, and T is for timing. Now, hear me out. A good 15 years or so ago, I was running a coach education course over here in Perth for Triathlon Western Australia. They'd asked me to deliver a course showcasing my work on video analysis and stroke correction. I started the day by asking the question, what is the single most important thing to get right in any one stroke? Well, the arm shot up like kids in a classroom. High elbow, sir. The catch. Distance per stroke. The glide. Now, don't get me started on that one. No, 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 it's breathing, as simple as that. If you can't breathe well when you're swimming, and a lot of people can't, you're going nowhere, and absolutely none of the other stuff matters one iota. As a pure coincidence, or maybe not, that day we had an elite triathlete come for a session with me and for the other coaches to observe that process. Now, this guy looked great in the water, and I do mean great. He seemingly had nothing wrong with his stroke at all, and yet something wasn't quite right, and he certainly wasn't as fast as what we both knew he could be. Sure enough, the video analysis showed that he was holding onto his breath underneath the water, and I mean completely. And this was leading to two things. One, he wasn't operating as aerobically as I would have liked to have seen by holding onto all that carbon dioxide in his lungs, triggering a gasp response every time he went to breathe. Two, all that buoyancy in his chest was forcing his legs down, and so he had to kick harder to compensate. Hello, the Chelsea Sodaro scenario, albeit for a different reason, of course. Now, this is just one breathing scenario that might be causing you issues, holding onto your breath. So in a moment, we're going to look at a simple routine that you can try to help you with this. But let's look at the bigger picture here. I have a saying, if something's going to go wrong with your stroke, it'll go wrong when you're breathing. And I see this all the time. There's a myriad of different things that can happen when you're breathing, such as one, dropping your lead arm and slipping through the water. Two, crossing over in front of your head and causing your legs to scissor kick apart. Three, and this is the big one, using your lead arm like a lever to climb up to breathe and thus losing most of your effective propulsion from that arm when you do so. I was listening to Jerry Rodriguez's awesome Tower 26 podcast just yesterday and one of Jerry's guests, Coach Jack is his name, was talking about how new force plate technology can help swimmers detect whether the direction in which they're pressing water is beneficial for their forward propulsion. Coach Jack is a unilateral breather and the force data was showing a significant push down with his left hand as he was breathing to his right. Bearing in mind, I was only listening to this on the headphones whilst I was walking the dog and not seeing the charts, it was easy to understand why Coach Jack would be experiencing this on his left hand as he was using it like a lever to climb out and breathe to his right. Funny enough, this was exactly the same scenario I was seeing when I did some pro bono analysis of long distance triathlete Sam Long from the US. Let's take a deeper dive into that now. We're gonna have a quick run through of what I did and what I suggested to Sam to help him with his unilateral breathing. When I first chatted with both Peter and with Dan Plews here about your stroke, they both said, oh, I'm so excited about you having a look at this, looking at Sam's stroke. There's so much that can be done here. Both of them pointed out immediately how there's a timing issue with your breathing. So when we go to take a breath, look at how you actually, even before we go underneath the water and look at Peter's uh, proper footage here, this right arm is being used like a lever. It's actually drifting up towards the surface and you're actually pushing down and lifting up to breathe to that left-hand side. You're essentially, Sam, breathing late on this left-hand side. And the more you push down with the right arm, the more we're actually going to be effectively sinking with the legs down at the back. So there's no wonder you become a little bit over-reliant upon the leg kick if we're breathing, lifting our head and breathing, turning the head too late, 
the legs, as you can see here, look, it's a direct cause and effect. We're pushing down with that right arm. The legs, the big leg kick comes in to compensate for that. And if we're breathing, as you are doing here towards the end of this swim, 50% of the time, so breathing every two strokes, 50% of the time you're swimming, we're just really leaving and lifting and leveraging ourselves out of the water, not truly driving forwards there, which is a, uh, which is a bit of a problem, of course. Surprisingly enough, Sam's response to this critique, which I spent all weekend on, was less than favorable. He didn't want to take any of it on board. However, I do hope that he can implement some of it as with a better swim, this guy could go far. So that all leads me back to blabbed, if you can say it properly. In my opinion, this acronym is almost completely back to front. Breathing has to be worked on above all else in the initial stages of development. And if it's not, you'll always be chasing your tail even at the pointy end of the sport. So to round off this first of five videos in this new series where we look at the hierarchy of needs for your stroke that actually does work, let's watch this simple sequence of how to firstly improve your exhalation and relaxation in the water, whatever your level. And then we'll use this to progress next week to the second letter of our acronym. But can you guess what it'll be? Answers in the comments below. Now let's check out this sequence, including some sink downs and some bubble bubble breathing to show you how efficient you can make your swim stroke just by focusing on your breathing for starters. Thanks for watching. All right, Scott. So this is gonna feel a little bit like child's play to yeah. start off with, almost too basic, yeah. but we're gonna go with it. I want you to hold onto the bar here with both hands. Yeah. And all you're going to do, you're not going to let go and sink yet. You're just going to pop your head underneath the water and just blow a long stream of bubbles from your mouth. Yeah. And I want you to feel like you're sighing in the water. So it's like no effort. It's just like, you know, why are we doing this type of thing? Yeah. Head underneath the water from the mouth. Wow. Like you're sitting down on the couch at home. Yeah. Okay, when you're ready. Yeah. Good. Just keep your body sort of vertical and upright because we are going to sink down in the water. And so your yeah, keep your body just straight down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing, but this time from your nose rather than from your mouth. Okay. If you do this properly, you should be able to hear yourself humming in the water. Okay. Good. Now you can probably feel there that initially, when you put your head underneath the water, you've got to push down on the bars quite a bit to keep your head under. Yes. But as you start to blow out and lose that buoyancy, you start to sink a little bit in the water. Yes. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to apply a very light bit of pressure on your fingers here. You're going to take a breath in, blow out from your mouth, and when you feel me let go, yes. I want you to let go and just sink to the bottom Straight of the pool. Okay. Straight up my mouth. Uh, from your mouth, yeah. Okay, when you're ready. Perfect, mate. Now, exactly the same again, but from the nose this time. Awesome. Now, we're just going to do one more, but we're going to do it from a tread, treading start, basically, so not holding on the wall at all. No assistance from me. And all you're going to do is, when you're ready, from the mouth, take a breath in, and then blow out. Just let your whole body go limp floppy and relax. Out now, mouth or nose? From your mouth, yeah. Now you're probably not going to go down straight away, yeah. but the key thing here is not to fight it and suddenly become tense again. Yeah. It's just to literally just let yourself go. Okay, from the mouth, when you're ready. That is perfect. One more time, but from the nose. Brilliant, Scott. Okay, come and hold on to the wall here. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to swim to the halfway. Still keep breathing to your favourite side, the right-hand side there. All I want you to do is when your face is in the water, I want you to look straight down at the bottom of the pool and just blow a long stream of bubbles, just like we did here. Nothing fancy, nothing fast, just eyes down. And we'll go from the mouth to begin with. So, Okay, here we go. Just to the halfway. So you can see that you're still looking forwards in the water here at the moment. So Scott, keep going a little bit further. 
Just look straight down at the bottom of the pool. That's better. Good. Excellent, mate. Well done. So by bringing your eyes down a little bit, it just like I showed you with Charles beforehand, it actually helps to float the legs up a little bit higher actually, at the back. I could have been dreaming, but I actually felt like their legs did pop. Well, you'll actually, this is why I'm filming you here, because you'll actually see your feet actually pop up out of the water there yeah. when you did that. Now, I want you to do the same thing on the way back, yeah. but what we'll do this time is a bright black from the nose rather than from the mouth. Still breathing to the right. Still breathing to the right, but I want you to have a go, challenging yourself to have a go breathing every four rather than every two. Okay. So eyes down, just literally look at the black line. Yeah. Eyes looking straight down, but from the nose, yeah. have a go breathing every four. Okay, okay when are you ready? Good. Excellent. You're sitting up much higher in the water already there. Good. Excellent, how was that? Yeah, good. Yeah, hard, yeah. Hard four is a bit hard. Exactly, so what do you reckon the magic number is? Oh yeah, I'd like to do three, but... Exactly. Yeah. So, for most people, most people when they breathe in every two and feel like they can't go to three, it's because they're not regulating the breathing properly, and that's why we just did that little exercise there. Yeah. Breathing every four for a lot of people is just that stage too far, and it's eventually. A bit uh, anxiety-ish. Exactly. Is that the word? Is that a word? Yeah, that's anxiety-ish. Well, let's <laughs> let's go with that. Yeah. What we're going to do now, we're going to go threes, but this is how we're going to do it. We're going to swim to the halfway, and this sounds totally stupid, but I want you to humour me here. You're going to take a breath in, and you're actually going to say this in the water very loosely: bubble, bubble, and then breathe. Bubble, bubble. Breathe. Now, you don't need to say breathe, obviously, that's when yeah, you're breathing. Yeah, I have yeah, seen yeah, a yeah. lot of people do that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just very loosely, yeah. in time with your stroke, just mouth the word bubble. Bubble. And what that'll do is it'll help you with the timing of getting this right. Okay. So when you're ready, bubble, bubble, breathe to the halfway. See so yeah, how you're sitting up much better in the water. Good work. Very nice. All right, feel okay? That actually works. It does work, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know how yesterday you were telling me on the phone that you know you don't tend to do much on the uh, on the iPhone and the yeah, emails and stuff. Like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to keep it simple, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what that's doing. It's just what it's doing. When you watch back on this video, you know, in months to come, the thing that's going to stop you getting anxious in the open water, especially, is something that you can just say to yourself like that which just distracts you from everything else that's going on. And if it has the added value of making you blow out and keeping your legs high in the water, then it's a good thing, yeah. as simple as it is. Yeah. Now, to put it into perspective, we're gonna go back, and I want you to go, bubble, bubble, breathe, exactly the same again. But when you get about halfway back, I want you to go right back to breathing just every two strokes towards me, back to looking forwards, and back to holding onto your breath a little bit. Okay. So it's almost like the new stroke for the first bit. Yeah, yeah. And then when you see me going like that, Go back to breathing every two towards me. Okay, here we go. That's it. That's the old stroke right there. Feel that difference? I've got a mouthful of water. Yeah. <laughs> it's really obvious on the video how much your legs suddenly start to sink when you go back to that. And what's really, really oh, obvious... What's really obvious when you see it is you'll see, even in that last 10 metres, you'll see a degree of tension and almost like you're rushing to get to the end, whereas the first part just looked calm and, collect, calm and collected, which is what we want. Yep. So what we're going to do now, we're going to slide these fins on and we're going to do this exercise where we're going to get this hand position working much better so we're not pushing and lifting up. That's all, folks.